Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, and Apple Podcasts. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 13, verses 14 through 18, which reads, The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. That's Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 18. Today we return to our study of Genesis chapter 13, where Abram and his family had returned to the promised land from their trek down to Egypt. Through the life of Abram, God has given us a great picture of what a life of faith in him looks like. In this chapter, God gave to Abram a new beginning in verses 1 through 4, a new burden in verses 5 through 13, and a new blessing in verses 14 through 18. Having considered Abram's new beginning and his new burden, today we will dive into his new blessing. In verses 14 and 15 of today's passage, we read, And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. This is the second time God has promised this land to Abram. The Lord is repeating his word to him to remind him about what he already had been told. The person of faith who is being defined by God always receives a new blessing from the Lord after his faith has been tested and found to be real. Notice the Lord told Abram to lift up your eyes. A contrast is being given here for our admonition. Contrary to Lot, Abram's gaze out over the land was directed by God. When we are walking with God, communicating with him, listening to him and talking to him, we are poised to see this life through the lens of his word. This is when we are freed to live life as he made us. The land promised to Abram and his descendants was described with clear geographical boundaries. It takes in all the land from the Mediterranean Sea as the western boundary to the Euphrates River as the eastern boundary. The prophet Ezekiel fixed the northern boundary at Hamath 100 miles north of Damascus, and the southern boundary at Kadesh, about 100 miles south of Jerusalem. Of the 300,000 square miles that God promised Abram, Israel has only inhabited 6,750 square miles. In verses 16 and 17 of today's passage, we read, And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land, through its length and its width, for I give it to you. There are two things going on in this promise to Abram. The first is that the land is being given to him and his descendants, and the second is is that his descendants will be like the dust of the earth in number. These two promises are connected 
but they are quite different. The promise of the land to his descendants is a physical promise, not a spiritual one. It is a promise to the physical descendants of Abraham. This has become evident, not only from the Bible, but in history too. When Israel was exiled, the land laid fallow. Amazingly, it was only after the people of Israel returned to the land again that it became fertile and usable. The land promise, which was made to Abram, is reiterated to his son Isaac and then to his son Jacob. Gentiles are not physical descendants of Isaac or of Jacob. On the other hand, the promise of a multitude of descendants is a promise concerning all people of faith in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a physical right, but a spiritual one earned on our behalf at the cross by the Lord Jesus. The Bible confirms that it is through faith that one becomes Abraham's seed. To be an heir of the land, one is born physically into the people of Israel. But to be an heir of the promises of God, which lead to eternal life, one must be born spiritually through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God not only encouraged Abraham to look at the land, he also encouraged him to look at the stars. The God who hung the stars in their places is the God who is mighty enough to light the believer's way. In verse 18 of today's passage, we read, Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. God provided us a picture through the yielded life of Abram. When he moved into the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites had to move out. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 14, we read, For sin will not have dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. Whenever we want to be free from the weakness and ruin and the power of sin, we can. The land lies open before us, so to speak. God expects us to possess it. Abram walked throughout the promised land and eventually pitched his tent by the Tirbin trees of Mamre at the ancient city of Hebron. The word Tirbin tree in Hebrew literally means a strong tree. The word Mamre here means vigor. This tree was actually a picture of the cross where the Lord Jesus Christ finished his work to atone for our sin some 2,000 years ago. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, we read, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And there at Hebron, which means fellowship, Abram built an altar to the Lord, denoting God was defining him. In the place of vigor and fellowship, Abram confessed again by building an altar that he was nothing but a fallen and incomplete human being without strength in himself, one who would be made whole by God. Everyone dwells in a world exactly like that of Abram and Lot, a world in which material values constantly clamor for us to make a choice. We can say with Lot, I want what the world offers me now. Or we can choose to be content with our tent and altar, enjoying the definition of God for our lives. Hebron exists even to this day, and it's the spot where Abram's tomb is located. It was there that Abram built an altar, which was the place of sacrifice. Abram sacrificed to the Lord in anticipation of the coming Redeemer. Now that the Lord Jesus Christ has come, sacrifices such as Abram made are no longer required. We now have the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ as our point of meeting with our Creator, the God of the Bible 
who has promised eternal life to all willing enough to receive it. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.